this is a building we can save for another 200, 300 years. But we need to be able to protect it uh, from these effects of climate change. It is going to affect everything we do, whether we're talking about sea level rise, uh, and if you think about New England and you think about all of these coastal cities with their historic buildings, all deep danger of, of getting kind of inundated uh, by water from sea level rise. But then a house like the one we're at is sitting on a hill. We're not thinking about sea level rise here, but if the water is just continually attacking it uh, from just the rainstorms, then it's going to lead to much deeper deterioration. I'm personally most concerned about the, the more frequent and intense rainstorms that we're having. And those really put a beating on the houses. They really overwhelm the gutter systems. They overwhelm the roofs. And uh, we, we get leaking now in places that we haven't. About three years ago, we did a study uh, in the state of Maine. So we looked at seven of our own properties and two properties in the easement program. We started the project as, you know, what would happen in 50 years with our gutters? And we realized our gutters weren't even performing today uh, for the rainstorms. Typically, it's a 10 or 20 year storm that gutters are designed for. But what we were finding was the data they were all based on was 20, 30 years old. And if you went to the weather service and got updated numbers of rain intensity, uh, in Maine, it was 25, 30, 40% more rain was falling in a given storm. What people aren't working on, which we're working on, is these little things. Like, we can make this building last a lot longer by making the gutter a little bit bigger or by changing some of the details in the buildings to better protect it against the effects of climate change. What we found in the study was actually sometimes our gutters were fine. They were sized appropriately, but at the end where the downspout was, there was a tiny, tiny little connector piece. And that connector piece wasn't big enough to handle the volume of, of water. And so all the water was kind of pouring out the side. Some was going down, but all of it was just rushing down the gutter to this small spot which then just overflowed. And over time, that kind of constant influx of water and constant deterioration will take away the paint, it will get into the wood, it will get into the building ultimately and in the structure. So if you looked at our houses, you were seeing this pattern of wear and deterioration on the corners where these downspouts were. And that really highlighted to us some of these issues. And we've been really going through and starting to make those little connector points bigger wherever we can. So everything is going to have to adapt. We're going to have to adapt. We're going to have to kind of figure out how and where the, the lines of interpretation and the lines of just good stewardship and management and land conservation blend together. Recently, we did a two-year project with Middlebury College. We had a cohort of interns. And the first year, we had one intern who worked with us to really kind of develop some of our baseline strategic thinking about uh, climate change and how it might affect uh, historic buildings with hotter um, you know, summers and warmer winters. There's less uh, opportunity to um, kind of cycle through the seasons now. There's a lot of just wet, wet, wet weather, and that's really affecting the properties. But it's, it's not just the buildings, it's also the plants. Uh, we're finding the, the changes in temperature are affecting our trees, are affecting how um, uh, the different plant materials at our properties grow. And we like to kind of replace in kind, we like to interpret what's here, but if the growing cycle changes and, and all of a sudden uh, uh, this area isn't temperate for certain species, we have to think about other species of trees. And when that leads to other trees, it means there's different bugs that are interested in those trees. There's different wildlife, there's different fauna and everything starts shifting and we're not prepared for that shift. Uh, today, based on the work of the Middlebury College students, we've been uh, tackling the uh, invasive species at many of those sites. We've been removing them and replanting with natives. We've been replacing some of the gutter components and redoing the gutters so that we can move the water more naturally. And of course, we're much more aware of how the Great Marsh interacts with uh, the Spencer Pierce Little Farm and the importance of that feature uh, to not just Spencer Pierce Little Farm, but to all of Newberry as a buffer zone for uh, sea level rise.
the history of of these uh, buildings, the architecture, how people designed and interacted with them is is critically important. And uh, one of the reasons is because they lived in a sustainable way. Uh, when they had these houses, they didn't have air conditioning. They didn't have central heating systems. They opened the windows. They figured out ways to not use fossil fuels for um, their their properties. And we opened the front and rear door of a, a main central hall house, and the whole the whole building ventilates the way it did 200 years ago. Still works today, and you can really learn something from that. You can learn how to design more sustainably. You can learn how to live. Uh, more sustainably and with um, you know, more thought towards how everything interacts, nature and the structure.